1994, Ottawa natives, Dave Rogers and his wife Meryl, adopted a boy they named Cameron. The boy had learning and behavioral difficulties, being diagnosed with ADHD. It was also suggested that he was on the autistic spectrum, although there was never an official diagnosis. Because of these difficulties, Cameron suffered with poor impulse control, and would often do things without fully thinking them through. Friends and family of the Rogers, have reported that they had pressure on their son, in order to provide him with the best life possible. However, Cameron says that they were overbearing, and tried to completely control his life. Cameron has since stated that he often had thoughts about harming his parents, and sadly he would act on these thoughts. On November 20, 2016, Cameron and his mother were in the kitchen preparing food to take to a family member's birthday party they were attending that day. Merrill was preparing a dish and Cameron was carving melon. Without provocation, Cameron started poking his mother with a stick, that he had sharpened. When that proved ineffective, he grabbed two knives and began stabbing her, as she screamed in pain. Dave Rogers ran into the kitchen, but was quickly overpowered. Cameron stabbed his father several times in the back, which pierced his lungs. He died within minutes. In his interrogation, Cameron states that his mother took a long time to die. He explains how he just wanted her pain to end. And when discussing this, it's the only glimpse of emotion he shows. However, I should mention that his mother was laying on the floor dying for several hours. He could have called 911 for help, or he could have helped her personally, but he just left her to die. Also as she lay there dying, he gouged out her right eye. In an interview after the trial, Merrill's brother stated that he telephoned the Rogers house on November 20th, to confirm that they were still attending the birthday party. Cameron answered and told him that his parents had both come down with the flu, and would not be able to make it. While they were talking on the phone, Merrill was on the floor in agony, and dying. Cameron stayed in the house with the bodies for over a week. At some point he moved the bodies from the kitchen, and then he dumped his parents' bodies behind a shed in the yard. His mother was wrapped in a tarp, and his father was in a suitcase. Eight days after the double murder, Cameron took a bus to Montreal, and broke into a building that was under construction. He tried to sleep, but was unable to. That night at 9.15 p.m., he telephoned 911 and reported his crimes. That's why I'm not online. Uh, hello? Hello. Um, I would like to confess to a murder. Okay. Well, so where are you? I actually, um, 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 I'm on a street, mm -hmm. um, um, in Montreal, um, um, I don't know where that street is. Well, you need, you need to know if you want to send somebody. Yeah, that's true, that's true, way. Eh? Um, well, uh, uh, I'm near a parking garage. Okay, you need to be more specific. I need an address or intersection. I'm going to find a street name. Oh, and, uh, oh, and, uh, an address. Oh, that might work. Mm -hmm. Um, um, how is my, oh, um, 1731 Mikado? Does that work? What's the name of the street? Mikado? How do you spell it? Um, M I K. A D O. It doesn't exist, sir. Oh well, I just read a sign on the on the house. Um, mm -hmm. I'm gonna go up to the the the, the corner of the street to see the street name. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, who who did you kill? Uh, my mom and dad. Okay. What do they uh, What do they live? They live in Ottawa. They live in Ottawa. Yes, sir. Okay. Hey, what's your name? My name is Cameron. Cameron. Cameron Rogers. How old are you? I'm 20, 22. 22. Mm. Uh, oh, here, here's the street. Um, 
Ontario mm-hmm. and Savoie. Okay. Are you going to stay in the corner? Yes, sir. Okay. I will stay so what, what are you wearing, uh, the, the clothing? Oh, I'm wearing an orange um, puffy coat and orange mitt with jeans. Okay, so an uh, orange coat and you're 22. Okay. Yes, uh, and I have a hoodie on. A hood. A hood. Okay, okay. What color do you do? Huh? What color do you do? What? Your, your shirt is what color? Oh, oh, well, the shirt is orange and the hoodie is blue. Okay, so your jacket is orange and the hoodie is blue? Yeah. Okay, okay I'll uh, okay, I'll send somebody to go and talk to you and just uh, see what's going on, okay? Thank you. Okay, bye. The day after calling 911, Montreal Police, confessing to the murder of his parents, Dave and Merrill Rogers, Cameron Rogers is interrogated by Ottawa Police Homicide Investigator. Detective Teresa Kelm. Okay, so how are you doing? Good. Good, you're okay? Yeah. All right. Do you remember my name? Uh, no. You just met me for the first time, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. So my name is Teresa. Okay. I'm with the Ottawa Police, and I'm a police officer, and I work in the Major Crime Unit. All right? right? So I met you for the very first time today, right? Mm -hmm. Just a few minutes ago, you were in your cells. I was with mm -hmm. another officer, and uh, we escorted you here, and we t told you to bring your blanket, because as you can tell, it's a little chilly in this room, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, these rooms are recorded, mm -hmm. okay? So since it's being recorded, I'm just going to indicate today's uh, date and time. It's Tuesday, November 29th, and it's 6.30 in the morning, and your name is... Cameron. Cameron Rogers? Yes. With an S, right? Yes. Right. Okay, my name is Teresa Kelm. I'm a police officer. And um, just before we get going, you, I, it's my duty to make sure that you understand why you're here. Okay, so that means you can call any lawyer you wish, all right? Mm -hmm. If you don't have a lawyer, you can call uh, a legal aid. Mm -hmm. I had already called. All right. Yeah. Okay. Did you want to talk to a lawyer again? No. No? It's, it's all sorted out uh, okay. so far. All right. Yeah. So, um, if at any time during this interview you want to talk to a lawyer again, I want you to tell me. Mm -hmm. Okay? Is there a reason why you didn't want to talk to another one again? Not really, but I, I mean, I, I already talked to one, I, 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 I don't want to like, you know, talk to another one, I, I don't see why I'd have to talk to two. The other thing I want to explain to you, and I've already explained this to you, is that the room's being recorded, right? Mm -hmm. And um, um, anything, you don't have to say anything to me, you don't have to answer any of my questions, but anything that you say to me, it's being recorded, and that can be used in court as evidence against you is happened right we can't we can't you can't do anything more about it but what you do have control over is today and tomorrow right mm -hmm. and when you talk about how the closest person to you is your father that tells me that there's there's a reason why this happened okay and we want to understand why that happened okay like w what what set you off i know there was a lot of pressure going on like there was your the schooling you know having to do work at home not being able to get any money something something triggered you to go off and you know that's what we're trying to to understand you know there's um seems like something that's not you because you've never had any dealings with the police so it doesn't happen very often that you have someone like you that's not had any dealings with the police and boom here you are with the murder of your parents okay we know that you've called you called 911 mm -hmm. and you reported it yourself mm -hmm. okay so that that says a lot about you as a person that you know what to do. You 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 made a mistake, 
and you're saying, okay, well now I need to do something about it. So you've basically taken control of that, of that situation. But it's what caused you to get there? Whose fault? Like, is it, is it your parents that were pushing you and you're shaking no? Well, I'm not saying it's not my parents' fault, but I'm, I'm not saying it's not my fault. I mean, right. I mean, I shouldn't have done it, which is obvious, mm -hmm. but, like, I, I don't, like, I don't want to place the blame, so, like, I can't really say that, like, my parents were putting pressure, but they were, but, I mean, that's yeah. no account for, you know, doing the deed. Mm -hmm. But, you know... When we're under pressure, I've been under pressure, we've all been under pressure. And sometimes when we're under pressure, it's not us that's reacting. It's the pressure that's reacting, right? I've done things when I'm under pressure that I'm thinking, what the heck was I thinking? It's out of character. And I'm getting the feeling, what, you're, what I'm hearing from you is that you were under a lot of pressure. And that's how you chose... To, to deal with it, you know, mm -hmm. and I and I and I respect what you're saying. Said, yeah, ultimately you're the one that did the deed, but there's something that caused you to want to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. yeah, and there's something that caused you to feel that that's the solution that you needed to do to deal with the pressure. I guess. Yeah. So no, that's okay. And I mean, it makes. It's, it's logical to me, it makes, it makes sense. So, other than um, your parents putting pressure on you with school and not wanting you to work and wanting you to work around the house, what else were they, were they doing that was adding to this stress? Other than no money and having to do, go into a, a program for three years that I didn't want to go into, um, I, I, I don't know, like, what else there would be, mm -hmm. like, I can't think of anything. What else was missing, do you find, in your, your life that you could attribute to? Your well, I, I might have felt, or I might have thought at the time that I was lonely, but then mm -hmm. after I killed them, I didn't really feel lonely. Well, I felt more lonely because, anyway, that's yeah. irrelevant, but, I mean... Mm -hmm realized that it was the wrong choice, but anyway. Yeah. yeah. What did you feel you would accomplish by, by killing them? Mm, nothing. Nothing, eh? Okay. And what, what caused you to, to just do this? I don't know. It was, it was like, like it was, I guess, the spur of the moment. Like it was, it just, like I, I it was just, I don't know what made me do it, it was just, like, I, I, I don't even know why I did it, even that, that I think back to it now, I don't even know why I chose to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, how did you do it? It was uh, involving mul uh, one or two knives and, and, and a stick. And a stick. Okay, and where did you kill them? In our kitchen. In your kitchen, okay, all right. And um, what was going on right before you killed them? I was chopping melon. Sorry? I was chopping, chopping me melon. Melon? Yeah. Okay, and where were your parents in relation to you at that point? Uh, my mom was doing something else in the kitchen. Okay. And my dad was somewhere else in the house. Okay, and then what happened? Do, do I have to talk about this? I don't want to talk about this. Okay, well why don't we talk about something else for for a while, okay? I, I, I know that's that's upsetting you. Um, how did they get to the outside? I, I, I put them there. Okay, and when did you put them there? Um, after they died. And how did you get them out to the back? I had to, uh, uh, well, I, I, I dragged my mom in a tarp. Okay. And then I put my dad in a suitcase okay. and then pulled him out. Okay, and how did you get him in a suitcase? 
Well, I sort of rolled them into it. Okay. All right. Did he? Did you have to do anything to get him into the suitcase? Or? Well, it wasn't like a perfect fit. Like I didn't like make him like fit. Okay. Like it, it wasn't like. Okay. All right. And how long did you remain in the house after the? A week. A week, okay. And where were they for that one week? Well, um, for a day they were wherever they got killed. Okay. And then uh, after that, um, was spent taking them out to the backyard, and then cleaning up a little bit. Okay. So it wasn't, you know, blood all over the place. Gotcha. And then that's when I called. Okay. And how come you weren't able to get into the U.S.? Well, you need some kind of like, um, like, like, uh, like, like, not like a ticket, but like... A passport or...? Well, no, no, not, that's, that wasn't the problem, it's like, because, like, I, to, to go there, to stay there, you need some kind of visa. I see. You know, and, you know, I didn't have that, so, you know, I'd have to lie and that, that just wouldn't work. Right, right, okay. And how did you pay for your train ticket? With some money. Okay, and where did you get that money? From their purse. From their purse, okay. I bought a ticket to uh, the U.S. Okay. But it didn't work. Right, because you couldn't... Yeah, you there was no visa. Okay, caused you to, to, to do that, like it was something said or no. done or... No, it was literally just a spur of the moment. I, I don't even know. Like, I, I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, it was took me 50 minutes of going back and forth about to do it and then not to do it. And um, was there, what were the plans that day? The plans was to um, do some studying and then go to the restaurant for the party. For the party, okay. All right. And your mom, you said she was in the kitchen? Mm -hmm. Okay. And where was your dad? He was somewhere else, and else I don't know exactly. Okay. Can you just explain to me how your dad, did they both, did it both happen in the kitchen? Okay. How does your dad end up in the kitchen? Well, um,. When I did my mom, he came running, and then I did him. Okay, all right. Okay, all right. And um, how long did it take? What do you mean? Like before your mom, like how long did you? Well, my dad didn't take very long, but my mom took a long time. And, and, and it was really hard because she was in pain and, and I wanted it to stop. <laughs> and I couldn't make it stop. And then I felt so bad because, because she was in pain. And, and I wanted her not to be in pain, but, but I couldn't stop it. Mm -hmm. And it went for the whole night. And what? <laughs> she it took the whole night for her to die. Oh, <laughs> How do you how do you know that it took the whole night? Well, I don't know exactly, but I mean, I went to my room and and, and she was still in pain like here, but then in the morning it was it was done. Okay. And can I ask a question? Why is it then after when you realized she was in pain? Why didn't you call nine one one? Well, I knew it was too late. And what do you mean by it was too late? The wounds were too bad. Okay. Okay. And um, so what about your dad? How soon after did you did you did you kill your dad? What do you mean how soon after? Well after you your mom? Yeah. Yeah. He and came running and then running. that's that's when it happened. Okay, and what did he say when he came in? Well, he was scared for her. Right, yeah. Yeah, and, and then it was quicker okay. for him. Okay. Now, you talked about a stick. 
Yeah. Who did you use the stick on? I think it was both. On both? And what part of the bodies did you hit them with? I think Sorry, it was the head. The head? Okay. Yeah. Right. The stick broke. The stick broke on who? I don't remember exactly. Okay. All right. And there were two knives involved? Yeah, I think and, so. Okay, where did you get the knives? The kitchen. In the kitchen? Okay. And um, do you remember what your mom said to you right before? Like before all of this happened? Yeah. No. No? Okay. Was there a conversation going on no. with you and her? No? Mm -hmm. And what was your mom doing? She was like... Uh, doing something, some kind of herb thing. I don't know what it was. It was just, she was grinding herbs or something. Okay. And how was that morning? This was around 11 o'clock. So what was going on that morning in the house? I don't know. I mean, like, what was... Did you have an argument with your parents or... Well, I mean, the whole upstanding, or not upstanding, the whole, the whole like disagreeing disagreement about school and work and all that was just hanging over me and I mean I guess like I mean we've had arguments before okay and heated yelling ones and I guess just at that time when the cloud broke I was chopping a melon okay. my question to you is that at the beginning I told you that you didn't have to talk to me and and you did yeah. I just wasn't like supposed to well, that's okay, but why? Why is it then that you decided to talk to me? Because I, 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 I would did something bad, and I want to, you know, be honest about it, and mm -hmm. you know, I feel that I should, you know, get, in, you know, in trouble, you yeah. know, more like finish this trouble. Oh, I trouble. see what you mean. Okay. You know, like. I see. Okay. And how do you feel now that you've come out and told us about it? Well, I feel slightly better, but I mean, it's not over yet. No, it's not. No. Okay. Right. And do you feel that, did I threaten you at all? Mm -hmm. No, and did I, I didn't make any promises or no. no? All right, okay. I just wanted just to make sure that we, we understood that. And, um, you know, it's, it's um, I know it wasn't easy, you know, telling me the truth. I want to thank you for, for telling me and explaining this to me. Um, yeah. I just, uh, I think we have a pretty good understanding of what's transpired now. So what's going to happen now is um, you're going to have to remain here in Montreal. In Ottawa, they have to get a warrant to get you back to Ottawa. So once they obtain that warrant, um, some patrol officers are going to come from Ottawa and pick you up and transport you back to Ottawa. and then you will go before, uh, you'll have to, you'll call uh, an Ottawa lawyer if you want to, I'm assuming mm -hmm. you, you should. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you'll go before a judge and mm -hmm. uh, be held in custody yeah. um, until, you know, your lawyers decide what they want to do, if they want to seek bail or if they're, you're going to be held in custody until it gets resolved. I don't know. That's not that's nothing I can't tell you yeah. what's going to happen. It'll be yeah. up to between you and your lawyer. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Do you have any other questions? Um, nothing that relates to this. Okay. Is there anything else that you Can want I to ask? Can I have some toilet paper, please? I am going to go and ask them Thank you. that if you can have some. Thank you. All right? Cameron Rogers went to court and was found guilty of murder. He will serve two concurrent life sentences with no chance of parole for 20 years, after he agreed to a plea deal. While in court, he did claim that his father sexually abused him. But then later, he recanted his statement, claiming they were all lies. Comment below if you think this guy was mentally stable, he definitely doesn't seem like it. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you enjoy these videos, drop a like in there too. Thanks for watching, and if you would like to see a certain video on something, leave it in a comment below. Until next time, stay safe.